How are you, Rick? Well, I'm doing good. I'm just a little concerned about my uh, former team because they're not playing very good basketball right now. And, uh, you know, they deserve. They're, they're actually probably fortunate that they're uh, that they're only down two games to one because they didn't play all that great in the game that they actually won. So I'm concerned about them. So what do you think Steve Kerr needs to move around on the on the chessboard to get game four in the win column, Rick? Well, I don't think he has to do a lot of things other than the fact that they he's just got to get the guys to play basketball the way they're capable of playing for more extended periods of time. When the Warriors execute offensively and defensively simultaneously so that they're, everything's going well for them, they're a very difficult team to beat. Uh, and they only have done that in about 15 minutes in the first two games, and they didn't do it very well in the last game at all. Uh, and if they play like that, they're going to lose. It's very simple. But when they play that way, they're they're just almost impossible to really beat because everything's going well. They're shooting the ball well. They're playing the great defense. They're playing the type of tempo they want. They're passing the ball. They're moving it, and they're their own worst enemy. They have rich. They get into a situation at times where they come down. They take quick bad shots. They don't move the ball. They don't put the pressure on the defense to have to react to the things that they're doing. They don't create the easy shots for themselves. And when they do that, they're vulnerable. And then, of course, Oklahoma City played you know, an outstanding game the last game. Maybe they just shot the heck out of the basketball, playing with a lot of confidence. So it's going to be a formidable task for them to try to get this victory tonight. But they can do it if they just go out and play what I call Warriors basketball on both ends of the court. Rick Barry, Hall of Famer, joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. Where did you stand on the Draymond Green kick to Stephen Adams and its intent? I don't think it was an intentional foul. I mean, I, I don't think he intentionally tried to, to kick him in the groin. Um, that is, I, I just don't think he did that. And, I mean, he said it himself. He seemed very sincere in it. Uh, and everybody has their opinion about what it should be. And I just, they just, everybody just looks for something to make a big deal about. I mean, things like this happen in the game. People flail after you get fouled. You try to make the officials think that you really got hit and the arms go out, the legs go out. I just don't think that he did it on purpose. I really don't. I don't think he's that type of a player. And I'm glad that they didn't, you know, suspend them for the game. Rick Barry joining me here on the show. Okay, so um, now what? I mean, because, I, I mean, you broke it down X's and O's style here, Rick. Uh, is this the, this is the part where we learn the championship medal of this team and whether it can match last year's, correct? Tonight? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And the thing that went, that went with it is that in two of the games, they just actually shot very poorly. I mean, you uh, you always say that you can live and die with the three-point shot. Just ask Cleveland about that. Oh, my God, did they get a little overconfident about their three-point shooting, and it just killed them in the games up in Toronto. Well, the Warriors didn't shoot well. Both Steph and Clay had horrible three-point shooting games the last game. I don't expect that to happen tonight. And so you, you just can't overreact to things and try to get too – sophisticated and analyze things too much it's it's really pretty basic go out play the type of basketball that enabled us to have the best record ever in the regular season play the type of basketball that when we play it that way we won a championship with it and, and, and to be honest with you last year in the finals i covered it for the san francisco examiner so i really analyzed and watched it very carefully mm -hmm. the warriors never played again in my estimation that kind of warriors basketball for more than two and a half quarters of any game and still won in six games against Cleveland. So they just need to go out and focus on playing that type of basketball. And it's a matter of getting your head in the game and don't get caught up in the fast tempo because Oklahoma City likes to push it and just come down and start throwing up quick shots. In the first game, Rich, they took seven consecutive times they came down and took some of the worst shots I've ever seen. I, I know Steve had to be just dying watching that happen. So they just have to play more intelligent basketball. So how concerned should the Cavs fans listening and viewing this show be in your estimation right now? Well, if the if they play the way they played up there with relying on the three-point shot and thinking they're going to win because they shot over 50% in two games back in Cleveland, they're going to have a problem. I mean, look at how few free throws they had in the last basketball game. They didn't attack them. They didn't penetrate. They didn't force them to put them on the free throw line. They played a perimeter game. The team that can beat you from the perimeter is the Golden State Warriors.
The Cleveland Cavaliers, on a consistent basis, are not going to beat you from the perimeter. And they got carried away because they just were insane from the perimeter in those first two games. And they went up there and they played the same type of basketball. And it didn't work for them. And I think, you know, credit to, to Casey for doing what he did is that he said, okay, if you're going to you know, beat us, we're going to lose to the three-point shooting. We don't think you can continue to do that. And he was absolutely correct. And they didn't do it. And so they've got to go and start pounding it inside, have LeBron penetrating, getting to the basket, getting to the free throw line, take the threes if they're open, but don't rely on the three-point shot if they're going to win the series. Well, last night uh, in these post-game comments, LeBron was asked if he had a different game plan prior to game four than he did in game three because he definitely was more of a scorer last night. And this was his response. I'd love for you, um, as a uh, Hall of Fame scorer yourself, to try and interpret this for me, because a lot of people are thinking that there's stuff between the lines to be read about LeBron and his teammates. I think I played um, to the game plan that I wanted to play, both offensively and defensively. For me, I gave everything that I had in the 46 minutes that I played, both offensively and defensively. I uh, felt great, tried to get my guys involved, get myself involved. So uh, my individual uh, game plan, that uh, was pretty good. What do you make of those comments, Rick? Well, I, I, well, I, I don't have any problem with what he said there. I mean, he's trying to get his teammates involved while he was still trying to do some things himself. I mean, he made some great passes to guys for easy baskets. I mean, that fourth quarter, those guys were insane. I mean, I, I'm, I'm sure that Casey said to his guy, hey, look, guys, these guys are going to not keep making every shot that they're throwing up there, which they did for quite a while. And if you realize what happened, like even for, you know, Channing, when he was well, shooting unbelievable in this series, well, when the game got really close, when they, come to, they cut the 18-point lead down, and what happened in that one, Rich, is that they got back too soon. When you're fighting from behind, on the road especially, you want to hopefully come back and take over late in the game so you don't give the chance for the team, the home team, to recuperate mm. and to be able to gather themselves again. They did it with like eight minutes or so to go and even took a little bit of a lead. So there was plenty of time for the Raptors to regroup, and they did that. And then when the game got close, did you notice what happened to their shooting? All of a sudden, they couldn't put it in the ocean. They couldn't. And so, you know, and that's what happened to them. And, but I had no problem with what LeBron said there. And I mean, he just made some just incredibly great passes, and he's always been a great passer and has great court vision. And he needs to continue to do that, but they can't rely on their three-point shooting. That, I think, has been their Achilles heel right now. Because, I mean, just during the regular season, they weren't a three-point shooting team. The way they played in the series when they won all those 10 games before they lost the first game is they were moving the ball, they were passing it, getting good shots, playing really good basketball, better than I've ever seen Cavaliers play because normally it's like no passes, one pass, two passes at the most. And they were really moving the ball around and just taking advantage of the other team. They need to get back to that type of basketball if they want to pull this series out. But they have home court advantage. That's what you play for. Now they have to take advantage of that. How's that water that you were mentioning the last time? The hydrus. Hey, you know what? The last time I did the show, we got a letter from a lady who, who wrote in and said that she had no idea she was dehydrated. She thought she'd try it. And she was having issues that I talked about, like my wife, and she said that it's changed their life. And so, you know, any time that people have an opportunity that you can do something to help people, it's great. But HydrusPerformance.com, H-Y-D-R-U-S, Performance.com. Check it out. Put number 24 in the promo code. you get a discount. But read about it because most people walk around dehydrated and don't have any idea. And you have a lot of ailments as a result of that. So just read about it. Check it out. And if you'd like to get some 24 in the promo code, you'll get a discount. I think just help you feel a little bit better because you'll walk around hydrated. That's pretty neat. Somebody uh, listening to the show, listening to you on the show. That's pretty cool. Um, since uh, also last time we spoke, Andre Drummond, uh, Stan Van Gundy said, was uh, going to think about shooting his free throws underhanded. Did you hear about that? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, said, I said, Stan, you know, let him get a hold of me if he's interested in doing it. If he doesn't want to try my son Scooter's, you know, unbelievably sophisticated uh, solid shot shooting sleeve, that will help him shoot well because he had it on for 15 minutes and my son got his elbow in eight degrees and I don't know why they didn't continue with it but he should try anything and if he's interested in it certainly be happy to work with him my youngest son can you shot 85 percent uh, in college last year who's now going to play at Florida for his last season um, he, he, he was tweeting out and sending out videos and say hey come on Andre come on my dad and I will help you get up to 70 percent take the game <laughs> to a whole new level <laughs> why not I mean at this point in time I mean why not yeah, Rich, why, I mean, 
why I'm trying to figure this out. Why do these guys have an aversion to trying it? Why would you not try anything? It's not like when I was trying to do it in high school back in the you know the ancient days. Right. <laughs> but the girl shot that way. I, said, I can't shoot that way. But what's the deal now? I mean, what difference does it make how you shoot it? The result is is it going in or not? That's the, that's the bottom line. Absolutely unbelievable. I agree. I don't understand it. All right, Rick. I don't understand. It. So you think it's going to still be a Warriors Cavs? Finals? I don't know. I'm really worried about the Warriors. I think the Warriors have to win this game. I know Charles Barkley said that, that, that you know that uh, Oklahoma City's got to win it as well, and I do believe that because I think if the Warriors win, the momentum switches back big time in favor of the Warriors having two of the last three games at home where they're very difficult to beat. So this is a critical game. Um, this is as important a game as these teams have played all season long, and I, I do think that the team that wins the game tonight will eventually wind up winning the uh, winning the series. All right, Rick, thanks for coming on. Look forward to chatting with you for the NBA Finals, regardless of the Warriors Always make it or not. Always a pleasure. Take thanks. care. You bet. Thanks That's uh, Rick Look. Barry at Rick24Barry. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.